Hey teens, Lauren here with BizRock. In today's video, we're gonna talk about um, specifically something that I always inspire our clinical team members to utilize when trying to get to know their patients just a little bit more. Now, if you've worked with us in the past, you've probably heard us talk about the comfort menu, right? So the comfort menu, and I won't spend a ton of time on it today, but the comfort menu is um, a menu of services and additional offerings. Some are complimentary, some you charge a fee, but the comfort menu has a list of different offerings in your, in your practice to better serve your patients or to enhance their overall experience while they're in the chair with you. And so, on the back of the comfort menu, because I like to use, use paper wisely, so if you've got a comfort menu on the front side, um, I love to have this sheet laminated, and on the back of that comfort menu are what we're gonna talk about today, which is our three questions. So I have my iPad with me here today, just kind of to give you an example if I were the clinician walking through this with my patient. So I've got my three questions here, and again, the purpose of this is really to start to develop a conversation with your patient. Figure out, like, why are they in the office today what are some of their goals and how can we help them um, and real quick I'll mention this should be for all patients except emergencies okay um, so I always get the question Lauren I, I get this for new patients but do I do it for my recall patients too you absolutely do guys we've all had changes in our life over the years fair and as we progress in life sometimes our needs change too. Or maybe you've got that recall patient who, you know, we asked them 10 years ago if there was anything about their smile they'd wish to enhance, but today they're an empty nester and they can finally, maybe it's that mom, maybe she can finally focus on herself and she wants to enhance her smile. That's why recall patients need that too. So I love these questions. Again, it's a great conversation starter, but it also gives you a great place and a great formatting for getting to learn about your patient's overall goals. Now, remember I said this isn't for emergency patients. Guys, if you have an emergency patient who's coming into your office and maybe they've got a lot going on or they're in a lot of pain, I would not ask them these questions. They just wanna come in, get out of pain as quickly as possible, and then if you're able to bring them back in for more of a comprehensive exam, that's the perfect time to roll out and ask them the three questions. So um, if you get stuck, reach out to us and our team's happy to go over that with you. So these three questions, again, I like this on the back of a comfort menu. That way you could just flip it back and forth. Um, and if it's laminated, you can write these out and simply just cavy wipe it in between patients. So the first question that I love to ask is really, what do you value most in your dental office? Um, what do you value most in your practice? Is it longevity? Is it comfort? Is it function? Or is it something cosmetic? So the purpose of that question is really just to know um, from a, for the doctors how they should treatment plan their patient. So depending on how I answer that, if I say, longevity is most important to me. I just want something that's gonna last as long as possible or keep my teeth as long as possible. You might treatment plan me a little differently than the patient who says, cosmetic. Cosmetic is the most important thing to me. Like I, I just want the most beautiful Hollywood smile possible. So that is what's most important to me. Now the patient that says comfort, sometimes they'll follow up with comfort and cost. Even though we didn't put cost out there, they might say, I just want it to feel good and I want the cheapest thing possible. Because that's a different treatment plan than the patient that said that cosmetic was most important to them, okay? So that's why I love that question. It's a great conversation starter. And again, if you're if you're an overachiever and you have this laminated, you can simply write down their answer. The second question we're gonna go through is, is there anything about your smile or oral health you would like to enhance? Now, if you've done training with us before, you know the importance of specific words that we ask. Um, and now I, I'm not a huge fan of scripts. You know, we have them, I just don't love to utilize them. I want you guys to master techniques and formulas. So notice the word enhance. Is there anything about your smile or oral health you would like to enhance? I would be specific on that word. And you gotta trust me on this, guys, because if you say, is there anything that you would like to change, you could offend a patient really quickly, especially if they walked in not feeling like there was anything they needed to change. Change means there's something wrong, let's address it. Enhance means it's okay, we're adding to it. So I love that question, but I would try to follow that one pretty specifically. 
The last and final question that I would ask is, is there anything you would like us to make sure we discuss before you leave today? Now, it's so funny whenever we're in the offices and we're going through and we're doing implementation days, which is the day where, you know, after we train, so we train all day and then we stay an extra day so that we can see how you guys operate and help you and coach you and guide you on implementing all of the things from the day before. So implementation days tend to be our favorites, but it's so funny whenever we, we go through this question on training day, because everyone's like, well, it seems a little repetitive. Do I have to ask that question? Every single time though, during our implementation days, when we hear team members trusting us on this process and asking patients, you know, is there anything else you wanna make sure that we cover before you leave today? Patients tend to open up even more. So even though they answered those first two, that third opportunity is that one more opportunity for the patient to share with you something that's a concern or something they have going on. And you'd be surprised what your patients will say. Sometimes they'll say, you know, I, I was told that I've got this, uh, this baby baby tooth um, up here in the upper right and I don't, should I be concerned about that? You know, if I had it my whole life. Is that something I should be concerned about? Or, you know, should I look at getting a crown there or something? I, I don't know. And so guys, the patient will lead you where they want to go. And so that question gives you that opportunity. Now, the last and final question that's not on here is if you're, this is for my doctors. So doctors, if you're treatment planning a patient and you're like, wow, they've got an extensive amount of work that needs to be done and you know what's important to them, you know what they're wanting to enhance, but you're like, ooh, I don't want to sticker shock them. I don't want to overwhelm them with a $20,000 treatment plan. It's okay to ask them about budget. Now hear me out because I always get pushback um, from like half of my doctors and then the other half of my doctors love this question. You know, at some point in your career, someone said doctors should never talk money to patients. And I don't know who said that. Guys, doctors shouldn't talk money to patients when it comes to small things like how much is a crown versus a root canal? How much is this filling gonna cost? Like you guys shouldn't be getting into the nitty gritty of the details on the treatment plan. But it is okay to say, um, Susie, patient, have you thought about a budget for your overall oral health goals? Guys, patients will tell you if they know they have a ton of work that needs to be done or they are they have lots of things that they want to enhance, they will tell you up front and they will say, well, actually, my husband and I have been saving for this work for several years or I'm an empty nester now. And so we made the commitment to focus on me and my oral health. I'm thinking maybe about 10-ish thousand, but I don't know. Like that's kind of my rough ballpark. Now, as the doctor, as the expert for your patients, you at least have an idea of how to guide the conversation from there without shocking and scaring off your patient. So don't be afraid to ask that question. And again, that for me, that's only if you see that you have a very large treatment plan or this patient's going to have a lot of work to be done. So it's okay. It gives you that guide. Um, the last thing that I'm going to share with you with regards to presenting these questions is twofold. One, I always ask the patient a question at a time. I listen to their answers, I jot them down, and then at the end of that, I reconfirm it back to the patient. So this process I always, I always teach our teams is ask, listen, confirm. Ask, listen, confirm. Now, the reason you do that is think about back to grade school. You know, we all played the telephone game at some point in our in our life or in our school childhood. And you remember the telephone game where you go from person to person and everyone's whispering something to the other person. But the origin of whoever started with the story or said the first phrase, by the time it gets all the way back to them, it's totally different, right? So sometimes we hear things, but we misunderstand things. When you ask, listen, and confirm back to your patient, one, you're telling the patient, I listen to you. I hear your goals. I hear what you're trying to look for. And it's our job to make sure that that's translated to the doctor. So that patient gets that extra level of experience and service from you. So it's really powerful. And then if you're the hygienist or you're the assistant and you're like, okay, I love these questions. This is great. Now what do I do with them? Does my doctor ask the same questions? Not technically. So this is where the handoff is so important. Um, now, if you've watched any of our videos, we're very big on building a relationship and a rapport with your patient first. You know, we believe you should build a relationship before you ask for a transaction, right? And so if you're doing that, hopefully you've gotten to know your patient and maybe you found out that they are a teacher for a living or that they have 
three children or love to go hiking in the area, whatever personal fact or information that you were able to gather um, about the patient during your one-on-one -on -one time with them is so, so important. So that ties back to these three questions. So when your doctor comes in the room, this is how you introduce the patient to the doctor and the doctor to the patient. This is the perfect handoff. So when that doctor walks in the room, it's always the patient first. You say, Susie patient, this is Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, Susie has been an amazing patient for us today. Um, she's a mom, they have a, a little boy who's four years old and it sounds like they're big hikers. They love hiking in, in our areas. So we've been swapping hiking stories for the last several minutes. Um, now the doctor knows a little something about that patient. So if that doctor, him or her, also hikes, now they have instant connection, instant rapport with the patient that they can talk about. Then you go into your three questions. So you might say, um, Dr. Uh, Susie patient, this is Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, Susie and her family, they're big hikers. You know, we've been talking about um, their recent hikes here in our area. Um, and now the doctor chimes in, says, oh, I, I've never hiked or I'm not a hiker, but I love that. I'm sure you see some beautiful views. And the patient says, yes. And then we go into those clinical questions. So I might say, if I'm the hygienist, I'll say, so Dr. Johnson, Susie was kind of telling me really what's most important for her. What's most important for her is cosmetic, but also it's really important for her to keep her teeth as long as possible. So longevity is also important to her. Um, one thing that Susie shared that she would like to enhance is maybe talk about whitening. Um, you know, she I talked to her about our whitening trays, and so she's really interested in learning about that. And then the last thing that she wants to discuss today Day before she leaves is getting her getting her son and husband in so I already told her the front office team is going to take great care of her today Susie did I miss anything with you see now I'm able to ask Susie one more time is there anything else that we need to cover is there anything that I might have missed so that's two opportunities to really make the patient feel like wow this person really heard my goals they really got to know me personally and now the doctor knows a lot about that patient and now him or her knows how to treatment plan or educate their patient properly. So it's a really special handoff. Um, so if you're using that, I would practice it because the first couple times, guys, it might be a little awkward, but you will get better. Just like anything else in life, as long as you're practicing and you're tweaking for your practice, you'll, be found, you'll become very comfortable, but most importantly, you'll have more productive conversations with your patients and they're going to feel heard from you. So if you, if you need guidance or if you need a template or a sample of that comfort menu with these three questions, questions on the back, reach out to us, email us, um, go to info at bizrock.com and we'll get those emails and we'd be more than happy to share that template with you. Otherwise guys, we look forward to seeing you and serving you soon.